Sir Joseph Paxton designed his masterpiece, the Crystal Palace, for the Great Exhibition of 1851. Later, it was moved from Hyde Park to the area of London that still bears its name. The building, inspired by a giant water lily, was destroyed by a fire in 1936. This is its proposed replacement, designed to dominate one of London's few tranquil parks. Is this really the best we can do? Crystal Palace Park, a safe and tranquil place, but one which Bromley say is derelict and must be built on. Their plan is to strip the site of trees and wildlife and transform the area with a vast 18-screen commercial multiplex leisure operation with huge ramps leading 950 cars to the parking lot in the sky. This is Park Royal, used by Bromley and the developer as a model for usage and traffic studies for us at Crystal Palace. But the Royal development is built on an old industrial estate, fed by the six-lane A40. And as you can see, this is the way most people arrive, in spite of there being a tube station only yards away. Our area already suffers unacceptable levels of car theft, vandalism and a host of related problems associated with the urban environment and our police resources are already stretched in trying to deal with them but with further cutbacks planned it's hard to see how they'll cope with the additional problems this development is bound to bring at Park Royal crime and drugs are issues that often spill into the surrounding residential streets this happens despite the best efforts of the police and the management to contain the problems within the complex. These sort of sites could become commonplace here at Crystal Palace. The Crystal Palace scheme would be enormous. The size of two football stadiums laid end to end with 950 cars on the roof. Although Park Royal is only the size of one football stadium, its car park holds over a thousand cars. Despite this, at peak hours, the car park fills to capacity and overflows into the streets. Where would all those cars go here? This will be the answer. Controlled and residence car parking, some £60 a year, with special permits for when your friends turn up. The 24-hour parking restrictions imposed by Red Roots will be a major concern for the local shops, businesses and our flourishing restaurant trade. 
With the construction of the development likely to take up to two years and vehicles servicing the complex into the early hours, there'd be chaos on our roads, both during and after construction. We all know that traffic is the biggest problem here and that gridlock can happen at any time. If events combined, say a concert, a blockbuster and Palace playing at home, how would we cope? The proposed tunnel entrance at about this point on Annerley Hill will only make matters worse. The 500 space reservoir car park for users of the controversial concert platform and the construction of a new roundabout will do little for Sydenham and Westwood Hills, College Road and Fountain Drive. Cars arriving at and leaving the multiplex on cold engines will dramatically increase pollutant levels and will affect the already declining health of young and old alike. Are we prepared to accept this in what was once called London's fresh air suburb? And do we want our precious ambulance service called out to even more accidents on our roads? It could be your child at risk. And how would the development affect house prices? Well, the signs say it all. And to back them up, the Evening Standard, just a few months ago, said that the area will be blighted. Our area could be enjoying a renaissance. But if our park is desecrated and our roads are full to overflowing, how easy will it be to sell our properties when we want to move? Bromley say that many jobs will be created, but those in the immediate area will come under threat from direct competition, parking restriction and traffic chaos. It is true that some jobs will be created, but as at Park Royal, many of these will be part-time, low-paid and on short-term contracts with little or no career structure. Is this what we really want for our children? Is this what we want on our park? And do we want thousands of cars an hour invading our local streets and parking outside our homes? And the noise and commotion of people leaving the complex and driving down our streets in the early hours? Well, this is what Bromley want to give you on 12 acres of our beautiful historic park. Bromley claim that the majority of people want the development and that only a minority oppose it. We know that this is simply not true. Thousands of you are not prepared to accept Bromley's plans. Events such as the comedy night and the auction have helped raise significant amounts of money for the campaign. Many schools in the area are involved in projects on the park. Yeah, but it still gets loads of traffic. Because they'll put in loads the campaign website is regularly visited. We must leave a legacy for our children that we can be proud of. Our community deserves better. We've got many views on what would be appropriate, but they can't be expressed without proper consultation. say they're not going anywhere and they've got some unlikely allies. She's 77 and a retired shopkeeper, but that didn't stop Bromley Council from ordering pensioner Joan Yatsley to appear in court this afternoon. Her crime? Baking bread pudding for the protesters who are occupying land at Crystal Palace. I baked this big tray of bread pudding and took up there. I wasn't there many minutes and I came away. I've never been to that site since. Never. And uh, at one occasion. And yet they've got my name from somewhere. Two others who were served High Court summons without reason suspect their names were plucked from newspaper articles. They too say they've never occupied the land in question and succeeded in having their names removed from the list. Several times during the hearing, the judge told those in court, this isn't a charade, it's a court of law. He ejected several of the protesters whose names and addresses he didn't consider were genuine. 
Red squirrel and mouse care of the big willow tree were not, he said, acceptable. The Womble of Wimbledon was also ejected. The name had been given as that of another protester. And though they were cheering as they left court, the so-called eco-warriors were furious that a judge had both granted a possession order and, in their view, refused to give them a proper hearing. That judge was so rude. I can't believe that an English court can behave like that. He was rude, he was arrogant, he was supercilious. The protesters have occupied the site at Crystal Palace since April. After today's hearing, they made it clear the battle wasn't over yet, though they admitted they may need some help. If anybody uh, who is experienced in this kind of matter, who has a legal background, preferably yeah. a solicitor or a barrister, who really knows their help. stuff, we need them and we need them tonight. The protesters now have four days to appeal. At the High Court, this is Louise Bevan for London Tonight. Well, the eco-warriors have so far set the agenda in the battle for Crystal Palace, much to the annoyance of the council. So what is the council's case? Well, David Bartlett is the deputy chief executive of Bromley Council. Good afternoon, Mr Bartlett. Hello. Now, first of all, let's start with this business of summonsing a pensioner to court. Now, she was only delivering a bread pudding, wasn't she? What's that all about? Well, clearly the council has to uh, go to court and name certain individuals. What we try to do is identify those individuals that which we believe, either from their comments or their actions, have been associated with the illegal occupation. So you're it, saying that you'd summon someone because of a comment they've made? If they have shown any indication of supporting or being involved in the actual illegal occupation, then clearly we will name them. But if, a if comment, the Mr if, Bartlett, a comment. You would summon someone on the basis of a comment? If the comment leads us to believe that they are actually going to be associated with the occupation of the site, then we will name them. Clearly they have the opportunity, as they did today, of going to court and putting a case before the judge to, to put the case that they are not part of the occupation. That is available to them. All right. Now, whatever. This issue appears to have divided the local community. I think you'd agree. What makes you so certain you're right? We believe that this, this uh, development has to be seen in the context of a wider regeneration of the part of the area. Now, as part of this overall process, we have consulted extensively with the community. We are required to do that, not just because of the planning application, but we've also set up uh, meetings with over 35 local groups and residents. We've set up a community forum. We've set up a business forum to consult with, with the representatives of both those communities. We've also circulated the area with 30,000 leaflets. And as a result of that consultation, we believe this does have wide set widespread support for the regeneration of Crystal Palace. Now, Mr Butler, I have to tell you that we've never had so many calls on a single story to our news desk. We have been inundated with calls from local residents and they're all furious about it. What do you say to that? Well, we don't believe they are all furious. As I say, we have c carried out extensive consultation. We have over 50 bodies represented on the community forum and that gives us very widespread support. We have over, we have many, many businesses, local companies represented on the business forum. We've consulted extensively with those. The developer, in fact, has changed his plans to, to reflect the concerns of the local community. So we don't believe that the vast majority of the local community, and particularly those across the whole of Bromley, are opposed to the scheme. It's a bit of a waste of money, though, isn't it, the whole thing? We believe that the cost of the eviction is an incredible waste of money. We are very disappointed with the fact that the council has now got to go ahead with the eviction for two reasons. First of all, it places not only the illegal occupants at risk, but also those people that will actually be involved in the eviction. Okay. And, it, and yes, the cost is considerable, and we think it could be spent much better on education and social services. All right, Mr Bartlett, I'm going to have to stop you there. Thank you very much indeed. Crystal Palace Park is one of the most protected in London. It was the site of the old Crystal Palace, so it's a listed historic park, and for many local people it provides a much needed escape from urban life. But now, it's under threat. The London Borough of Bromley have given developers planning permission for a massive commercial development at the top of the park. This will include an 18-screen multiplex cinema, the biggest in London, with parking on its roof for 950 cars. We don't think that this is the right way to treat an historic park. We can't afford to lose the open parkland, over a hundred trees, the plants, all the wildlife. It's not worth it for a multiplex cinema and a few fast food outlets. There's nothing about the proposed leisure complex which makes it special. I know it's easy to knock, 
So we've actually come up with our own idea to redevelop the palace site. We would like to see a people's park. This could feature statues of great historical figures such as Joseph Paxton, the architect of Crystal Palace, along with a model of the original building. There could also be an ecology park and an art gallery where local people could exhibit their work. We've even enjoyed the support of eco-warriors, whose presence has done a lot to bring this important local issue to the wider public. I'm not against multiplexes. I love films, and I know multiplexes can create some jobs. I'm just saying they should be built where they don't harm the environment, not in parks. Parks are special, and if we build on them, we'll lose them forever. I believe that we have a moral responsibility to the next generation to keep our park areas green. If Crystal Palace Park is to be covered in concrete, who's to say what's next? It could be your park, so this affects everyone.